Nestled in the heart of North Wales, where the River Clwyd meanders through the verdant countryside, stands a fortress that has witnessed centuries of history. Welcome to Rhythland Castle, a symbol of power, conquest and the turbulent relationship between Wales and England. But Rhythland is more than just stone and mortar. It's a place where legends were born, battles were fought, and a nation's fate was sealed. Today, we're diving deep into the history of Rhythland Castle, a fortress that holds the key to understanding the medieval struggle for power in Wales. I'm McRouser, and this is the story of Rhythland Castle, a tale of king's conquest and a clash of cultures that changed the course of history. To understand Rhythland Castle, we first need to step back to the 11th century, a time when Wales was a patchwork of independent kingdoms. The Normans had just conquered England in 1066, but Wales remained fiercely independent, with its own culture, language and warrior traditions. Rhythlan, strategically located near the Irish Sea, was already a site of significance long before the castle was built. It was the seat of power for Welsh princes, including the legendary Griffith ap Cluelin, who ruled as the King of Wales in the mid-11th century. Griffith ap Cluelin was a formidable ruler, uniting the Welsh kingdoms and challenging the Normans. But after his death in 1063, Wales was fractured once more, and the Normans saw an opportunity to extend their influence. The Norman invasion of Wales began in earnest in the late 11th century, with William the Conqueror and his successors pushing into Welsh territory. Rhythland, with its strategic location, was a prime target. In 1073, the Normans established a Mott and Bailey castle at Rhythland, marking the beginning of a long and complex struggle for control over the region. This early wooden fortress was the precursor to the stone giant that would rise a century later.
For decades, the Normans and the Welsh clashed around Rhythlan. The Welsh princes, determined to protect their land, launched numerous attacks to reclaim the fortress, but the Normans held firm. Fast forward to the late 13th century, enter Edward I of England, a king with a vision to subjugate Wales once and for all. Edward, known as Longshanks and Hammer of the Scots, was equally determined to crush Welsh resistance. Edward embarked on a series of military campaigns in Wales, aiming to establish English dominance. As part of his strategy, he ordered the construction of a series of castles across North Wales, known as the Iron Ring. Rhythlan was a key component of this plan. Between 1277 and 1282, Edward transformed Rhythlan into the imposing stone fortress we see today. The castle's design was revolutionary for its time, featuring a concentric layout with massive walls within walls, making it nearly impregnable. But what was life like inside Rhythlan Castle? At its height, the castle was not just a military stronghold but a bustling community. Soldiers trained within its walls, craftsmen toiled in workshops and nobles held court in its grand halls. Archaeological finds at Rhythlan have given us a glimpse into the daily lives of its inhabitants. From the weapons they wielded to the food they ate, these artifacts tell the story of a community living on the edge of conflict. Rhythlan also played a role in the administration of Edward's new territories. In 1284, the Statute of Rhythlan was issued here, formally incorporating Wales into the English crown and laying the groundwork for centuries of English rule. But like all great fortresses, Rhythlan's importance waned over time. By the 14th century, the castle had served its purpose, and the focus of English power shifted elsewhere. Rhythlan gradually fell into disrepair, becoming a relic of a bygone era.
Rithlan Castle may be a ruin now, but its legacy endures. It's a place where you can walk through history, feel the echoes of ancient battles, and reflect on the complex relationship between Wales and England, a relationship that has shaped the very fabric of these islands. So the next time you find yourself in North Wales, take a moment to visit Rithlan Castle. Stand within its walls and remember the kings and warriors who once walked here. Their stories are etched into every stone. Thanks for joining us on this journey through history. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more tales from the past. Until next time, keep exploring.